Hey guys, it's Mr. Decker here again. We're working in Unit 6 on physical computing using our Adafruit Circuit Playgrounds, and we're on Lesson 9. This time we're working on a project to make a game. Uh, I am going to uh, be working on this myself and making a game very similar to the example game here on Bubble 1. Um, you can work similarly to me or make your own game. Either way, it's all good. All right, so let's test this app and see how it works. So it says, this is an example of a tug of war game that could be built in this lesson. To play, pair up with another student. The student on the left will click the left button on the circuit playground as fast as they can, while the student on the right clicks the right button. Whoever can get the bug over to their side first wins. So let's see, we've got grab the bug. So we've got a title, we've got an icon, uh, and we have directions. Each player clicks their button as quickly as possible to get their bug over to their side. First to grab the bug wins. So run, and then I'm clicking L and R, right? And if you're doing this with a friend, then you're each, you've each got a hold of this thing. If I go all the way over here, player one wins. Okay. Um, if I reset run and let's see what happens, then player two wins and we get a different buzzer sound with a different frequency. So cool. I'm going to make a very similar game. Let's finish. Continue. Uh, before you'll, you move on, you'll need to look at the project guide for this project. Wait for instructions from your teacher. Uh, let's continue from there. Bubble three. So I've already made this. I'm going to version history it, start completely over, and walk you through it. Okay. So creating our screens, the first thing we need to do is create all the screens that we've sketched in our planning guide. Well, okay. We're, we're making the game on bubble one for now. Uh, use design mode to create all of the screens that your program will need. Don't forget to pick sensible IDs for all of your design elements. So this game, let's see, when we run it, actually reset. It's got a game screen and a wind screen. A game screen and a wind screen. So just two screens. Uh, we'll keep referencing this to going back to it. So let's do the screen design. Uh, so I'm going to create all of the screens. So I need to say new screens. We'll have a screen one. And I want to rename that, can I? If I say new screen, it gives me three screens. Oh, I renamed them down here, of course. Okay. So I didn't really want screen three. So let's version history again. Start over, start over. And my brain is operating on fumes, dude. OK. So with screen one selected, I'm going to call this one um, just the game screen, I guess. Whoop, why aren't we typing? And then we're going to add a new screen. And this one's going to be the windscreen, right? So we had basically two screens. Back over here to the demo. You can do it. You can do it. I believe in you. There we go. Run. Ah, uh, okay. We've got the game screen and the wind screen. So I guess the directions stay up there while you're playing. Yes, they do. Okay. So going back over here, we've got our game screen and a wind screen. So on the game screen, we need a title. And I'm calling mine Use the Force because I'm a big Star Wars fan. Uh, we'll just call this title, though. 
is the force. And we want this to be bigger and centered. Text alignment, center, font size, Let's see, 36 fits, and we'll try to center that. OK, that's good enough for now. And then uh, next thing I want to do, this is my game screen. We need directions. So let's find the text area. Let's see, yep, and then We'll just call this directions. And the text we want to put in, each player clicks their button as quickly as possible to get the icon to their side. The player who gets the icon to their side wins. Hey, icon. Let's fix that. Whoa, whoa, whoa. You can spell. So here's the directions. Let's make the text a little bit bigger. There we go. I like it. Centering. OK, so now we need a button. It says play down here at the bottom. We'll just leave it as orange this time. All right, so this is going to be the play button. And we want it to say play. And I'm going to make the font size way bigger. There we go. And then we need our icon. So we'll go to image, drag that out here. And I'm going to choose an icon for it. And because this is a Star Wars game, we'll use the rebel symbol. Where is it? Where art thou, O rebel symbol? You've probably already seen it, but my eyes are not finding it for some reason. Hmm. Oh, there it is. Found it. OK, and then for this, I am going to change the icon color because the rebel symbol is more like an orangey color. There we go. Perfecto. All right. And its exposition is 105, which I believe is basically the center. And yeah, OK. So we've got our home screen built. Um, it needs to go that way a little bit. Everything else looks pretty good to me. OK, so that screen is built. Let's jump over to the windscreen. And the windscreen is going to have A winner label a lot like um, the last project we just did lesson eight winner and for now we'll say Jedi 2 let's make that text bigger and center it where's the font size I'm missing it somewhere. Font size, there it is. Let's make this bigger. Let's really celebrate the win, right? 
So Jedi 2. And then we need a, a win text underneath telling you what Jedi do Jedi 2 just did, right? So another text element here. And we're going to label this one win underscore text. And we want it to say, is the Jedi master? Naturally, right? Uh, so let's center that. And font size up, 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 up. Uh, what was the font size of this? 38. So we might as well go with 38 on this as well. Just moving things around. So Jedi 2 is the Jedi Master. And it looks pretty well centered. And then we're going to have a button, a play again button. All right, and this is going to be a and and to say play again like so, and let's just increase that font size. Looks good. All right, I'm locking my screens, so let's move on. Run. Oh, board's not wanting to connect, so let's refresh. I'm in the Maker app on my PC. There it goes. So it's working now. So finish, continue. Let's see what we're doing now. UI element events. Now that all of your screens are designed, you can add any event handlers that will respond to screen interaction. These should be listed in the events section of your activity guide. If you run into new events that you hadn't thought of in the planning stage, make sure you add them to your project guide. Don't worry about making these completely functional yet. If your events rely on board elements or your own functions, we'll take care of that in later levels. Okay, so we're making uh, event handlers for screen interactions. So these are going to be the on event box. So on event and, whoop, and another on event. I like these separators. If you don't know how to do that, you can switch to text, put your cursor behind a semicolon, enter. If you go back to show blocks, then you get that extra uh, separator. OK, so we've got two on event blocks here. Um, I've got a play button here, so I need to uh, set property. But first, we need to say we're going to hit the play button, click. And then we're going to set the We're going to hide the play button, true, yep. And I also want to hide the directions, so let's do that. So set property, directions, hidden, true. That way when you're playing, you're only seeing the title and the icon moving back and forth. OK. And then another on event for um, play again button, right over here on the windscreen. So play again button, do, 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 do. where did he go? There he is. When that's clicked, um, we're going to set the screen back to the game screen. So let's run it. Play. Okay. 
And then let's go to the windscreen run. Oh, well, we can't test that yet, I guess. But we'll trust that it works for now. Um, okay, don't, yeah, it says don't worry about making these completely functional yet. If your events rely on board elements for your own functions, we'll take care of that in later levels. Makes sense, yeah. Um, because these are things that, that or this set screen, game screen, getting to the wind screen is going to be a conditional. So let's finish and continue. All right, so this says go back to the events section of your activity guide and find any events that respond to your board. Okay, so now we're adding our onboard events. Uh, create, create event handlers for each of those. Now, if these events rely on functions you haven't written yet, just leave yourself a comment in the code. Okay, so, all right, so we need to go into the circuit drawer, onboard event, and it's going to be button L down, and we need another on event, and it's going to be button R down, because when we hit these buttons, right, we want the uh, rebel icon to move back and forth based on which button is being pressed so that it works like the tug of war example on the first bubble. Uh, but we don't have any functions yet, but I do know I'm going to have functions. So each of those now, just leave yourself a comment in the code. So, okay. Yeah, there's create functions there. Um, so comment block, where can I find a comment block? Where are you, comment block? Where are you? There it is. So comment here and comment here. This comment will say, um, make free um, or when, yeah. So when button L pressed down emoji or not emoji, <laughs> we just did that emoji game. Uh, the icon moves left. Um, so I'm gonna copy that, control V, when button R, press down, the icon moves right. Okay. So we'll run, finish, continue, bubble six. Feels like we're moving quickly, but we haven't really made our um, app do much yet. Define your functions. Define all of your functions at the bottom of the program under the comment, create your functions here. Right now we're only worrying about writing the function definitions, the part which looks like, right? Um, like the toothless grandma alligators, right? Those define a function blocks. So let's make some functions. We're going to make several of them. Uh, for the first one, I keep doing that. Okay. For the first one, um, we're making that rebel symbol move left. So let's call it rebel left. Um, and then we're going to yeah, we're defining all of these. So I do need to put the code in them on this bubble. So this will be rebel R, make it go right. Um, that way I can call this function here and call this function here in these different on events for the different buttons on the board. Uh, I need a win game function And that will allow the game to uh, when a conditional is met, right? Do some things to let you know that you won. So when like going to the win screen and telling you if Jedi won or Jedi two won, right? 
what else? What's another function we might need? Let's think. I think that might be it. I think I only need three functions to make this work. Yeah, I think only three functions are needed. So let's work on making these work. So let's define them. So we need variables in these. These are going to be very similar. So we'll say rebel x, because we're moving that re rebel, goodness. Rebel x, because we're moving it on x, gets. We're going to get the property of. Oh, did I never change? Hold on. Let's go back to design, uh, game screen. I never changed this. So let's name it um, SW Rebel. Um, so back to the code. So now get property of SW Rebel. And we're getting its X. OK, we're getting that X value from it. So now we're going to call that variable uh, and use it for this is rebel L, so we're subtracting x minus. Um, let's just start with ten. And we'll mess around with that and see what works later when we're testing our game. All right, and so we're going to build this one out very similarly. So rebel x. And we're going to get property. Of our rebel icon. And we want its x value. And so. This time, we're going to add, calling that variable, oops, and we're going to say, you can do it like this too, rebel x plus 10, enter. OK, so, ooh, but you know what, we're not, we need to, Still, we need to set the property for each of these. So we're setting the property of um, the rebel symbol. Uh, it's x. And We're getting that from rebel x. Oh, whoops, wrong place. Rebel x. So, OK. Let's, call, well, it's not telling us to call them yet. OK. I want to test it, though. <laughs> to make sure it works. So I am going to call them. So I just grabbed the call a function. And since we're going left, this is going to be rebel L. Or wait, no, what did I say? Yeah, rebel L and rebel R, right? OK, so let's run this. And that's working. OK. But we need to get our win game function working. We're going to have to set up a lot here. So variables, using that same label, rebel x, and it's a get property. Um, 
And this is our win condition. So we're still getting the property of the icon because if it's so a certain distance this way on X, then Jedi one is the Jedi master. If it gets a certain distance this way, then Jedi two is the Jedi master. So now we need to use this local variable and we're going to set up a couple of conditionals here. So a couple of if statements checking where this is on the app on X. So if we need math, we'll do greater than on this one and we're going to do less than on this one. So if rebel X is greater than, uh, let's see, let's use this. Uh, 275. And over here, if Rebel X is less than hmm. I don't know, 275 is here. It's got 320 total. Um, okay, rebel x less than, uh, let's just, let's just say 40 for now and see what results we get. We can play around with those numbers later to make sure that everything's working the way we intend it to. Um, so yeah, we're going to, in both of these cases, set the screen to the wind screen because this is our win condition, right? And then we need to set the property. So looking at the win screen, we need to set the property of this winner uh, text there to say something else based on who won. So we're gonna set the property of the win, uh, not the win text, but the winner. Where's winner? There it is. Text. And let's have it say, uh, let's see if it goes all the way that way, then that's Jedi 2 winning, I believe. And for the other one, text again. I think we want it to say Jedi 1. Um, so let's see. Let's put win game up here. We're not winning the game when we hit the play button. We're not winning the game when we hit play again. We're winning the game based on board events. So I think win game only needs to be called here and here. Let's see. Yeah, let's run it, play. So when I go over here, it should tell me that player two won. Whoa, okay. Well, that's not working for some reason. Let's go back this way. Oh, I see. Derp. Okay, X. That's why that wasn't working. Run, play. I was getting the width. There we go. Jedi 2. So play again. Oh, but look at that. When I play again, look where the icon was. So I'm going to have to fix that too. Oh, and it's very early on where Jedi 1 wins. So we can fix that. 
Hmm. All right. I'm glad we were able to figure out why I wasn't getting my wind conditional working. Um, we're still working on defining this. Hmm. Trying to think how I can reset that to the center. I think if I put Pardon the silence here. I'm thinking, okay. Um, I think if we have an on event inside this, play again, button clicked. Or actually, hold on. Let's try it this way. So if I have my play again button click up here, then I should be able to set the property of this X to its original, which is, I think it was 105. Yeah, it's X position of 105 originally. So X back to 105. So run, play, get to the windscreen. Play again. Okay, yeah, it resets it there, so I don't need to have an on event in my win game function. The on event's up there. All right, already set. So, hmm. All right, so we've got those called up here. Let's finish and continue, because I think we've already done more work than it was asking us to on that bubble. Bubble seven, with your functions defined, you can call them wherever you need, go through your event handlers or anywhere else in your program that your function should be used and add calls to the function you created. Okay, yeah, we've already <laughs> called them here and here. So run, finish, and continue. Um, <laughs> All right, so at this point, you should have most of your program in place. Now you need to add whatever finishing touches are needed and do a little testing. When your app is ready, have your classmates try it out and see if you can find any bugs, confusing design choices, or missing features that you'd like to work on. Once you're all done with this version of your program, click Submit to turn it in. Okay, so... Mine's working as I want it to, but these numbers are wonky. So like, look, when I hit play and I move this this way, look at how quickly it wins. So we'll play again, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven clicks. So let's try that again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, one, seven clicks to win going to the left, going to the right, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. Yeah, that's not fair. So I need this to be a smaller number. Uh, let's see what zero does. Reset, run, play. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. 11 times, one, two, three, four, five, six. I like where that ends up. If this way it goes like off the screen before you win. So let's decrease this number. Like, let's see what 230 does. Reset, run, whoop, run, play. Okay, whoop. Oh, I forgot to start counting. Okay, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. How many was it the other way? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. How far over was that going? Okay, I like it. 
that way. So let's do like negative 20 maybe. Set run, play. It's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 that way. And now it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 that way. Okay. So in theory, um, you know what? I'm not sure there will be a victor fast enough to me. So I want to increase these numbers. So instead of 10, let's try 20 and 20. And we'll have to, have to test how many times it takes each direction again. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Play again. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Oh, perfect. All right, so testing it one more time. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Good. That's, yeah, that means the game's going to go by a little quicker. Okay. I think that gets it. So let's finish and continue. And then when you get here, there's a survey to fill out, but you don't need me for that part. So. I hope you enjoyed this one. Um, I hope you make your game unique and not exactly like mine, because that's the idea. So anyway, have fun with it. Bye, guys.